seems like you've always been in this position of just having to stay ready. Clearly taking advantage of those opportunities. I guess, do you ever get frustrated with the idea that you feel like you should be starting at this point? Uh, I get frustrated a lot. And um, well, I see it as no God gave us no. It's tough as bad as the shoulder soldiers. So I just uh, just try to stay motivated, work hard every day, and just know, just be prepared. So what's keeping you locked in at that uh, just the brotherhood, you know what I'm saying? We're strong. Everybody here, love each other. And I, I love my teammates, so uh, we just stay close and just stay positive. When you were being a top 75 player, uh, but you've stayed patient. I mean, were there times you thought, well, I could go somewhere else and I could be playing, you know, full time? Uh, that never came to my mind, you no. Know? I just feel like I just got to work harder, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, competition here is. It's gonna be hard. That's the reason why I came to Ohio State is to compete. So if I gotta work hard, I work hard. The most basic question: Do you prefer Matt or Matthew? Uh, Matt would be fine. Matt fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, now I know you're a quiet guy. Yeah. Um, is it hard to kind of you know being a quiet guy? Do you feel like sometimes you can get overlooked because you're not here's me, here's me. Yeah. yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. I get overlooked because of that. I've always been quiet, and that's just how I was raised up and just know, okay. say things in my own, but yeah. Is that, are there times you, you think, if I'd been more vocal and maybe I'd be further along just because I'd be calling attention to myself? I feel like, yeah, I feel like that sometimes. Um, like, many times coach be like, no, talk up, no, just smile a little bit. <laughs> you know, I try to as much as I can. Just try to stay focused most of the time. When you don't know exactly when you're going to play, how do you keep yourself ready? I just take it a day at a time, stay positive. You, know, you just don't know. You just can't give up. It's going to be obstacles, but you just can't give up. So I just take it a day at a time. You're playing left guard now. You also were competing at center. Which do you prefer? What do you think is your better position? Honestly, I don't have a better position. I think I, I love both at this point. So wherever my name is called, I'm ready to go. And how do you think you played? I think I played pretty good, honestly. You know, Coach said, you know, get out there and I'm ready to go. Matt, I'm, my, I'm, I'm trying to start my car and it just keeps turning <laughs> over and turning over and turning over. Is it my spark plugs or is it my starter or my solenoid? It all depends. It's a 71 Chevelle. <laughs> it all depends. It all depends. It could be your alternator. It could be a battery. I reason thought I, reason I asked Matt this is because he can take a car apart and put yeah. it back together and drive it to New York and come. I thought you had an Edsel, Jerry. What's that? I thought you had an Edsel. Not that old, Bill. Um, <laughs> you know, tell, tell us about your interest in cars, where it came from, and just how fanatic you are about it. Uh, I had an interest in cars since uh, I was eight years old. So, what was it like two years ago? I recently bought like a, a 1990 300ZX. Nineteen ninety what? Nineteen ninety three on a ZX. Okay, yeah. And I did a rebuild engine by myself and everything, and it's running fine right now. So. What's your major? Yeah, HDFS. It's like social work. Okay. And it's like totally like. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. Nothing. Right? I just see that as you know, something I like to do. Is, Is it anything you're interested? Both huh? Datsun 300ZX? It's, it's not a Datsun, it's, it's a, a Nissan. It's a Nissan, okay. <laughs> is that something you'd have an interest in, though, is like a post-football career, like working with cars? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, I know a lot about cars, and you point out a car, I tell you the year, the model, I just know based off the little details and everything that's with the car, but, yeah, I really like cars, too. There's got to be some kind of NIL possibility with that, right? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> what, what does that do for you in terms of your game? I mean, I would imagine there's attention to detail. There's probably some patience in there because that's not a real quick process. Like, how, what about working on cars maybe carries over to make you a better football player? Uh, no, this every part is going to be challenging to you know remove and study because if you don't do it right, of course you got to do it all over again. So just about taking steps and patience to you know get things right the first time and not the second time, and you know on the field just. No, it's steps to things, and I just see as, you know, every day you have to improve and get better. You just don't know when, you know, your name will be called, but you just got to be ready. So, Matt, building off of that, what kind, what kind of car were you when you got here, and what are you now? You said car? Yeah, like, what were you as far as the, the rebuild, as far as the, you know, restoration of a vehicle? What were you as a player when you got here versus what you are now? Uh, 
So you want me to compare myself as a coach? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, I believe you can do it. I think I said I was a Volkswagen Beetle. Okay. And now I could possibly say it's hard, but I'm, I'm big into cars. I could possibly say that I'm a, a 70 Chevrolet. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> With open headers. Yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, do, do your teammates kind of ask you about your interest all the time? Did, you, did they ask you to fix their cars? Oh, yeah, most definitely. A lot of teammates come to me and ask me to fix their cars now. Free will needs, especially like Chris Olave. You know, he had problems with his car and then got it fixed. You fixed it for him? Yeah. Did you charge it? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you must be a very popular Team, guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How old were you when you fixed your first car? Do you remember that? Uh, that was yeah. really like yeah. two years ago. That's when I bought the, the Nissan. So right now it's running pretty fine. No problem. So I drove it to New York twice already. That's nine hours to drive back and forth, so it's running pretty good. This is more recent. Yeah. And when you're, you know, preparing for a game, whether you're, you know, in the starting lineup or, you know, you're slated to be a backup that week, is your preparation the same? Does it differ at all? Uh, it is the same, you know. I just, you know, just try to lock in. You, know? you just enjoy the game, enjoy teammates, and you just motivate each other. You know? And every day it becomes – no hard at times, but it's, it's family. This is a brotherhood, so you know, we all bring together, have the same energy, and just enjoy. Who are maybe some of the people here who have helped you the most along your journey to this point? Uh, a lot of them is like Darren Mumford, uh, Nick Petit, because you know, I came in with Nick Petit, so we always talk about situations and uh, just fix it. And, uh, Somebody you can always lean on, so that's great. How happy were those guys to see you get champion this week? Oh, very happy. They know that no matter what, I was going to give my best and I was going to do very well. I showed them practice and they had no doubts in their mind that I wasn't capable of doing it. What does that mean to you to just have that opportunity and then grade out as a champion and show that you can do it? It means a lot, you know, just to show everybody, so the coaches that they can lean on me, you know. My name is Colin and that's, I'm trying to build a trust. Until this year, maybe last year, this offensive line did not have the depth that it does now. No. So you would have, a player of your caliber, would have been playing at almost any time. I don't know if that's something you've thought about and thought, you know, obviously you want to have as many good players as possible, but you would have probably played a lot more earlier if, if you'd been here three years ago, let's say. Yeah. Something definitely. you've thought about? Uh, a little bit. I just thought like last year, you know, playing the, big, the biggest three or the biggest two games, you know, really put me in a uh, no, uh, the steady mindset to just you know, competing at the highest level against great teams. You know? So I felt like that was a, a bigger accomplishment. And I'm, sure, so, yeah. I'm sure you expected to start this year being one of the five. How disappointing was that? How did you cope with that? Uh, it was very hard. Uh, it hurt a lot. But you know, at the same time, we all a team. So just got to work with it and just keep trying. Just what, keep trying. what Coach Stud, Stud or your teammates say to you about, hey, this is really not really about you. It's about the fact that the DeJuan has been so good and we're going to do it because of that, not that you've failed. Yeah. It, was, it was hard dealing with that. Um, many times, you know, just try to drop your head, but you got to pick it up. You know, but at the same time, I just try to stay positive. Just try Ryan Day said on the radio on Monday, he said, you know, you were a guy that you honestly, you could have gone into his office and complained that you weren't starting. Did you want ever want to? There's times, you no. Know, but at the same time, I just feel like there's nothing better at home than here. So it's like, if I was to meet that source, it's like weird. You know, I just don't want to make another step to something that would be worse and just improve. Really. So even if you're not a starter, this is still where you want to be? Yes, did it add to your motivation? It, it did. You know, it just helped me build what's inside. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's going to be obstacles, and I just got to face it. You know what I'm saying? It's got to work harder. You know, stay positive, just work harder. So. Well, what stands out about Tyleek Williams on the inside as a, as a young guy in the interior uh, going up against him? Oh, he's pretty good. Um, as you know, a freshman, he comes on the ball quick, and he has technique. And that's great about him. Like, we always compete and he beat me, I beat him, you know, and we just get better every day. That's my thing. And he's doing great. Were you surprised to see him make that big play uh, against Tulsa in the fourth quarter? Honestly, I was not surprised because I believe he could do it. 
I believe every show is hard in practice. I believe we can do it. So that's good. What was your reaction on the sideline? <laughs> I was pumped. I was pumped. Really. I told him, like, that's the best thing you ever did. The, the twist, everything. It was great. What, Perfect time. Yeah, what separates a guy like that? You know, from your vantage point, what separates a defensive tackle and makes him takes him to that next level? You told him I drift there, man. Uh, just working, you know. We compete every day, every day. Like, we always treat it like it's a real game. So no matter what, we're going to have our little talks back and forth. Just you know, just to have that feeling of a real game. You don't know what's going to happen. And it's all technique. Everything is going to go back and forth and just get better. You know, just get better. Yeah, you touched on a second. What sets, what sets Talik apart, I guess, a little bit? I mean, what makes him special in your opinion? I mean, is it quickness? Is it strength? Is it combination? I mean, what, what sets him apart? I just think there's no quickness in his combination. You no, know, he knows the right gaps. He knows how to angle himself to you know defeat blocks and stuff like that. So uh, he's a pretty good player, and I appreciate for that. Because he's a big guy moving, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that always. Uh, that, that's interesting. I wanted to ask you, what was it like to be out there? in the midst of a game where y'all are rushing for over 300 yards, Trevion's having his day and stuff. You're a major part of that. Did, it, from the running standpoint, did it feel a little bit like a machine? What, what does it feel like when things are, are clicking like that? I mean, we do the same thing in practice. We defeat blocks. We all drive as a team. Me, Nick, whoever's at center, and Luke, we all just go off the ball. And we already know, like, Practice is going to be a little easier than games. You know, the harder you practice, and or the harder you practice, the easier is the game. As that game went on, did y'all feel yourself as a group solving the puzzle they were showing you guys? I mean, obviously, through three, five, they're shooting guys from all kinds of directions. Yeah. Like, what was it like, I guess, to uh, solve that puzzle or to work on that puzzle as the game went on? I mean, it all, it all came together on the sideline. We all sat there, communicate, and then we talked like, no, as a team, no, argue, no arguing. And we just got to fix, just yeah. communicate. What did y'all figure out? I mean, what, what, what was the key there uh, finally? Really just, it's just the flow, and you got to see the over, you know. You just got to really gotta focus on where they're overlapping on the sides and know how to block it, who to send out there and defeat the block, you know, so, yeah. What does Zachary well, we, show you? Uh, a little bit of video you've seen of them. What, what, what do they show you up front? What's, what's the concern this week? Um, just really, it's, it's a great team. You know, the team, they come off the ball hard. And you just have to have the right technique. Like Coach Tuttle would say, right, left, right, left. Don't do left, right, because, you know, the little things come into a big problem. So you just, the little things you just got to fix and just master it for this game. Matt, when we talked to Coach Day about you in, in the summer, um, I think it's like maybe even Big Ten Media Day, he was saying that, like, oh, you could watch um, 10 plays and he looks like he's, like, first team all Big Ten. And then it was like maybe the other 10 plays were the problem. Did you, even when you were disappointed about the decisions, that, you know, not being able to start, did you come out of the preseason with, like, an idea of here's how I need to get better? Yeah, I know. Sometimes I look back at um, things I struggle with, and I know what Coach said, like, it'll be 10 plays I do good, and I was probably slack off a little bit. And I think, like, we spoke about that, and a lot of it has to do with, like, conditioning, and that's what I've been working on every day now. So, you know, every time practice ends, I just ask, like, I grade myself. See what I gotta work on. So most of the time before we practice, I have like a little run in, like a you no, know, do a little 40 yard, or whatever, just to get my body right, ready to go. What grade did you get today? I think I did. I did pretty good because the coach does have pretty good. Oh, okay. But so, well, you said you gave yourself a grade. I didn't know. So did you get yeah, an A today? Yeah, I did pretty good today. Okay. Anything else? Matt, you prepare. You preparing to start this week as well? Uh, yeah, I am prepared. Um, just staying locked in, watching film with my teammates, and I'm all prepared. Honestly. Have you been told you are the starter this week? Uh, not really, but I have an idea. Hey, Matt, how, how important, I mean, obviously, <coughs> you guys are, uh, you guys did a very good job at, like, you know, creating holes for Trevion last week, getting holes for that run game, even through the end. Uh, lack of consistency with their bond and things like that. But I'm curious what the role has been or what you've seen from kind of those outside pieces from, say, the wide receivers, from the tight ends, those guys that have kind of helped you guys out to create the space necessary for Trevion to get those home run runs, I guess. Uh, talking about the tight end and the receivers, uh, I think they do a pretty good job. And most of us, we mostly talk about just blocking, you know? Every time you go out for the pass and they block. And I think they do pretty good. 
just blocking. Does, and does it make it easier for you guys? It really does yeah. at some point. It really does. Because most likely, you know, if you run a stretch or whatever, you want somebody to block on the outside. So, yeah, it's pretty good.